Hello, it's Father Rich, number 75. We made it on the Masterpiece list. You can see the film. You can actually order it um, on TV or something. Uh, it's called The Tree of Life. It's a uh, film from 2011 by Terrence Malick. It really, I was amazed. It has some big time actors, Brad Pitt, Sean Penn, Jessica Chastain. Nominated for three Academy Awards, didn't win any of them but one of which was Best Picture. Um, but it's definitely done in an abstract form. Good thing we got that in before that disappeared. Um, and so kind of harder, it can be harder for some to appreciate. He had done some other movies that were more than the typical plot narrative moving theme um, that gave him a little more popularity. The Thin Red Line, I think in 1998, excuse me, about World War II. And... Uh, he did one on the New World about the uh, Jamestown um, colony in the early 1600s. And those were more mainstream. But this, this one is definitely more abstract. Um, but it tells the story uh, of, a, of a man kind of flashing back, giving you a sense of what influenced him growing up and the impact that's having on him in his adult life. And basically, um, his parents, his father, they, they kind of vocalize, verbalize that it's kind of this nature versus grace. And, um, and, and Malik's coming from this from a Christian perspective. So he's obviously showing the way of grace as being more um, appealing, so to speak. But um, the father represents nature and kind of um, survival of the fittest and, and kind of then, but this also showing the negative impact that can have on us kids when he gets a little uh, over the top, uh, can be somewhat physically abusive. Uh, and he's dealing with his own struggles in his workplace where he kind of sees himself as a failure. He regrets not pursuing music and working in a plant. He ends up having to take a demotion, uh, you know, to and have to move to another plant just to survive. And um, so a lot of those frustrations kind of taken out on his family. And then the mother represents the way of great, the way of grace. And um, it's a great kind of depiction of who she is. Uh, the only way to be happy, the mother says, is to, is to love. Unless you love, your, your life will flash by. Do good, wonder, hope, help each other, love everyone. Every leaf, every ray of light, forgive. So uh, living in a life filled with splendor and with pain, she tells her sons, requires an embrace of the way of grace. So then the older son, played by Sean Penn, is kind of wrestling with these two influences and ultimately um, is able to go by the way of grace um, and forgiveness and mercy and love. But, um, but again, it does it in a very abstract kind of not typical movement of a story. And so I can uh, say to you, I know my dad and I actually watched it at one point, probably in the last year, and uh, struggled with it somewhat um and my dad even more so because of that you know the lack of kind of the movement plus just the harshness of the story it starts with a quote from job um let's see that quote um basically dealing with it doesn't i guess they don't give the quote here i've read other things online that did give the quote but um, basically dealing with the problem of suffering, the same thing the book of Job does in the Old Testament, the seeming absence of God in the glorious way he has revealed in his created universe. So at some point, they actually flash to images, beautiful cinematographical, cinematographical maybe, um, images of creation. But again, they're not really explaining things. You're kind of having to just experience it. And that's a big part of what he's trying to, he just wants you to kind of experience it to go deeper um, and not necessarily give you the answers, but let you just kind of experience it, which again, this is not an unusual approach with some of this, these masterpieces, especially more in the modern art. Um, they say it's ultimately a film about redemption, not about finding all the answers, but finding the love that allows some questions to go unanswered kind of, you know, again, which in my ministry and the life of faith, that's a constant challenge we have is that there aren't answers to all these questions and kind of finding God and peace and grace um, and joy even and hope in the midst of 
not having the answers to all our questions and understanding why and realizing that's not really our purpose is to know why, um, but it's to trust God and to surrender to him. So this Terrence Malick was born in Texas in 1943, actually lived, I think, in Waco, which is the setting for this book, Tree of Life. It's about a family in Texas. Um, he actually studied philosophy at Harvard and Oxford, so obviously very intelligent. Uh, he had an unfinished thesis on the thought of Martin Heidegger, um, and his translation of Heidegger and what is, still, uh, is still a book that you can get to this day. Um, he worked as a journalist in uh, college. He worked for Newsweek, The New Yorker, and Life, before finally deciding to pursue his uh, growing interest in film. And um, he wanted to direct his own scripts. He wanted to write his own scripts and then direct them. His first major film is called Badlands in 1973. It was a critical success, um, gorgeously filmed. And then also The Days of Heaven, 1978, which earned an Oscar for cinematography and a Best Director Prize at the Cannes Film Festival. So in the 70s, he started you know, getting uh, recognized and critically acclaimed. But then he disappeared for like 20 years. Um, he lived for a time in Paris, wrote more screenplays, and then he finally broke his silence in 1998 with that movie, The Thin Red Line. Um, again, more of a mainstream movie that I think... Um, it, they say it had seven Academy Awards that it won, so very well received. Um, and then the, that New World film in 2005, the, the story of John Smith and Pocahontas. And then um, when he did The Tree of Life in 2011, it was his fifth feature, uh, feature length film. Um, and then he followed up with a, a, a movie called To the Wonder in 2013, explores the nature of love, both human and divine. So they say that Malik is a perfectionist and that's why it would take so long for him to finish movies and do movies and uh, that he would, he would film uh, you know, tons and tons of footage and then edit it. And a lot of it would end up on the edit, editing room floor, which they said could be a frustration for the actors because they sometimes wouldn't even appear in the film or they'd be very limited compared to what they um, had, you know, had filmed. And so, but yet because of how thorough he was, it seems to be very well respected. Um, so they mentioned that, uh, to conclude that he uses the media of, of film to engage us in a series of questions about beauty, meaning relationships in God and artistic contemplation of the intersection between the human and the divine for that. He deserves our patient attention, which will be bountifully rewarded. So again, does take some patience to appreciate it um, and is very different than what our kind of consumer um, Im immediate gratification um, approach to life can be. So it challenges us in that, but I think worth the challenge and certainly a good um, goal for us all to not need that immediate gratification um, and to kind of have to work for some meaning and um, getting something out of something. So. Terrence Malick, The Tree of Life, number 75. We're going to have one last review of the whole thing uh, for our final film. I hope you'll join me for that. But thank you so much for um, joining me for these. Congratulations, you did it. And uh, we'll have our concluding video next. So have a great day. God bless. Take care.